Hello friends, in this video we'll be looking at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and even G25 of a bell beaker from England. Uh, what's interesting about this bell beaker? Let's start with the time. Uh, this individual lived in this time frame, which looks like the Middle Bronze Age. Uh, and this individual had Y DNA, he did not have Y DNA because it's actually a woman. And his mitochond her mitochondrial DNA was T2C. If that tells you anything, you might be a very big um, genetics nerd. To me, it does not say anything, but I know that T is something vaguely European farmer or whatever, so maybe it's a European farmer derived lineage. I don't really know anything about mitochondrial DNA. Uh, so this individual has mitochondrial DNA T2C, and let's dive deeper into her autosomal DNA. First, we're going to start with what she looks like. Uh, let's start with Nasha Kot results. Nasha Kot results for her is that she has green color eyes. Um, actually, it looks like green or blue with an amber center. Maybe not, not so much hazel, but hazel is slightly higher here than blue. In terms of the percentages, there is a little bit of a higher chance of her having hazel eyes than blue. Um, she does not have light brown or dark brown eyes. It looks like her eye color is within the blue with amber center, green to hazel range instead. Uh, it looks like she has brown hair and light or fair skin and the predicted eye, eye color image for her with the web version of Nasha Kod is this. Um, I actually, you know, I was I was looking for actresses, actors, and I found this actress that I think matches this profile quite well in terms of what she looks like, Betsy Brandt. Uh, this woman played Marie Schrader in um, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. So... That's kind of the features that this bell beaker might have had. It looks like brown hair, uh, green eyes. That's kind of the features that Betsy Brand has. Um, I, she's like um, squinting her eyes in all the pictures. I can't really see a picture with her actual eye color, but she has um, green eyes. Yeah, you can kind of see that's green. I don't know. It's kind of difficult to see because she's squinting. Yeah. Okay. So here you can see clearly. You can see that's green eye color. So that's kind of the phenotype that I think this Bill Beaker might have had. Uh, I like this phenotype. That's kind of my little theory, whatever. Uh, you can disagree. So let's look at her polygenic risk scores with my trait predictor. She seems to have a very low risk score for schizophrenia. She seems to have a slightly above average score for type 2 diabetes. And she seems to have a it looks like above average score for Alzheimer's as well. So we're going to go and look what made this Belbiker woman have such a low score for schizophrenia, such a high score for diabetes, type 2 diabetes and Alzheimer's. She's GG in Combt's Val methodation, meaning met, I mean, Val Val genotype. So this is what your genotype in Combt, uh, which means higher activity of the Combt enzyme that breaks down dopamine, therefore quicker breakdown of dopamine, less dopamine in the system. Uh, the problems that come with this genotype is that individuals with this genotype have uh, disadvantages in attention tasks, tasks that require a lot of activ a lot of dopamine activation. However, they have advantages when it comes to stress resiliency. Uh, what's what makes this a little bit more complicated is she has a TT genotype in this variation of MAOA, so she actually has warrior genotype in MAOA together with the warrior genotype in Compt. Uh, they kind of cancel out in terms of the effect. She's not so much a warrior as uh, as or warrior as just intermediate. She's just, uh, in terms of actual phenotype, she seems to be intermediate between the warrior and the warrior, uh, the warrior phenotype. So intermediate number of the intermediate uh, speed of dopamine reuptake. Um, now she has two derived no gold in various DRG2 pro pro, so decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. This also leads to a decrease in the uh, calculation of the risk score for schizophrenia, as well as GG genotype here, which also leads to less dopamine D2 receptor sites uh, in the brain and also decreased risk of schizophrenia. These two come together. So it's not surprising if you have if you have a genotype that's uh, implicated in higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain in, in the no-go learner variation in pro in pro, you're also going to have corresponding genotype here. And the other way around, it goes as well. These are linked variants. So it's not so surprising that she has these genotypes here. What's interesting is that she has a CT genotype in this variation of DRD2, which leads to slightly lower autoschizophrenia as well. This is um, a little bit less common. It's actually... Uh, the T allele here is actually most common in Europeans, and it doesn't really... 
It kind of does, but it doesn't really show up in other ethnicities as much as Europeans, and it leads to a significantly decreased risk of schizophrenia. I don't have the exact science behind it, but I think my personal theory is that it, it uh, decreases the availability of dopamine D2 receptor sites. That's my personal theory. That's how I think it works. But um, there hasn't been, to say, there hasn't been as much, you know, research into this as into like TAC1. And in TAC1, she does not have the A1 allele, so she has normal genotype in TAC1, typical genotype in TAC1, uh, normal or slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain, and therefore slightly lower risk of stuff like ADHD and alcoholism. Technically, this would lead to a slightly higher risk of stuff like schizophrenia and bipolar, but it doesn't really matter because these are such rare illnesses that having a slightly increased risk for these illnesses, it's not as bad as having a slightly increased risk of, for like ADHD and Parkinson's because ADHD is super common. Alcoholism is super common, right? So you have to worry about stuff that's more common. Um, but uh, the downside is he here is that it comes at a cost, you know, slightly lower risk of ADHD, it comes at a cost. Um, so she does not have long form 5-HTTLPR, once again, short form 5-HTTLPR. Uh, therefore, does not have a decrease in risk of depression. Typical genotype for pretty much everybody is that they don't have long form of HTTLPR. They have slightly higher odds of depression. Um, in case of Europeans, some Europeans specifically have the C allele here. I don't rem I don't really remember what the alternative allele here is. I think it's C. I think it's C, but don't quote me. Don't quote me on that. I think it's C, the, alter the alternative allele, and the C allele leads to long form of HTTLPR pretty much always. If you have one, it doesn't matter. You're gonna have uh, long form of HTTLPR. That's the phenotype. It's really dominant. So it's kind of interesting that she does not have this European variant that protects from depression. Uh, she has short form of 5-HTTLPR. It's what it looks like. Uh, she does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Also very kind of. Uh, surprising because it's a bell beaker individual, but I guess the European lactose persistence thing came a little bit later uh, after her time. She has two variants for higher levels of empathy in OXTR, does not have the sociopath gene. <coughs> and now for diabetes, for it looks like she does not have type 1 diabetes, however, she has some variants for increased risk of type 2 diabetes. We're gonna check her uh, genotype for the uh, for the fat gene actually in a little bit. Uh, for Alzheimer's, okay, so here we uh, we see why her score for Alzheimer's is so high. It's because of this genotype right here, one APOE to allele. Uh, APOE is the it's kind of like the big gene when it comes to Alzheimer's prediction. It's the most important gene, the most significant gene for Alzheimer's. So her having one APOE to allele is kind of significant. Definitely significantly higher odds of Alzheimer's because of just this genotype here. Um, okay, no micro P, you know what that is. And when it comes to the fat gene, let's see, no fat gene variants, look at that. So the fat gene variant in the calculation actually contributes to the type 2 diabetes score, but in her case, her score is pretty high, even though she does not have any fat gene variants in this variation of FTO. <coughs> I do uh, need to remind you that it's not everything that's on the screen that goes into the calculation. There's a lot of, a lot of more stuff that's not shown on the screen that goes into the calculation for the polygenic risk scores. Keep that in mind. Um, does not have variants for increased pain sensitivity, and she's got this genotype right here, which leads to impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete rather than power athlete, right? Okay. For EZAR, does not have East Asian EZAR, no East Asian facial traits, um, and a genotype here, which leads to average brain volume, slightly smaller brain volume. This is the common genotype for pretty much everybody. Um, we're going to skip all that. When it comes to the albinism and atypical traits panel, she does not carry any of the albinism mutations. Pretty interesting. Oh, no, nobody nobody I've seen so far does. And she does not have any variants for familiar Mediterranean fever. No risk variants for that. For MTHFR panel, she seems to have normal healthy genotype in MTHFR. Uh, so no problems with folate metabolism. And she has this genotype right here, which actually leads to slightly higher broad, excuse me, blood pressure. When it comes to the blue eye haplotypes, uh, this is something that I neglected to show you, but we're going to look at that here. She has heterozygous genotype for BH1, which is actually probably one of the big contributors to her having such a dark eye color prediction. She has BH2, and she's heterozygous for BH3. Very interesting. And she also does not have BH4. Now we're going to move on to her results with G24. 
So, in terms of the G25, she seems to be closest to Icelandics and Swedish and Norwegians. Um, basically, it looks like Scandinavian people are the closest to her. Uh, I have a, I have a theory, and my theory is that the reason she's closest to all these Scandinavian people is because of the high step component, and also because uh, maybe she lacks a little bit of the modern Western European drift that makes Western Europeans different. And I think uh, one interesting phenomenon you will notice is that all of these bell beakers and corded wear people, uh, if you look at them in GD match, they always score so much West Asian and like South Indian and all kinds of exotic admixtures that modern individuals who descend from them don't score. I think that also comes back to this and it comes back to these individuals simply not having the modern European drift that these calculators look for. And we see, uh, I need to give you this disclaimer, right? It's a disclaimer I needed to give you to explain this result. And uh, look at that, you can see there's 8% Kalash, there's 1.8% Darginian. Um, and and uh, I'm not saying it's not accurate, it's, it's, it's true. Uh, that's what this individual resembles. But you have to keep in mind that the ancestors of like white people in the Bronze Age were different from white people today. There's change in population over time. Over time, we became less similar to these Kalash and Darginians and various Middle Eastern people. We morphed into what we are today over time. So uh, this Bronze Age individual scoring Kalash and Darginian, I don't think it's an indication of her having... Yeah, you see 10% Kalash here. I don't think it's an indication of her having some kind of exotic admixture. I think it's more so an indication of modern uh, modern Northwest and North Europeans in general having some drift that pulls us further away from Kalash uh, relative to our ancestors in the Bronze Age. That's the way I see it. Well, thanks for watching until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content and also you can download this file in 23andme format from the link which is in the description. I remind you that in every video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.